Hi, my name's Keith Cooper and this is part of my look at this the Epson P7500. Um, in this short video I'm going to show some of the things that I do during testing about making colour profiles and things. Now understanding aspects of print quality from this is essential if you're going to get the best results out of a printer like this. A printer like this costs two and a half thousand pounds plus tax so um, it's not a cheap bit of kit it's a precision bit of kit and it needs a few adjustments and things setting up before you start using it. Uh, certainly if you want to get the best results out of it. Now, there, I'll, I'll come back to certain aspects which may give you slightly better performance than others. I'll look at that when I'm doing some actual big prints. But this is about using the printer. So, a few things about getting started. First up, after the printer was shipped here, um, I left it overnight to settle after it got the inks and everything in it. These printers do not like being used. They like being used regularly. So if you get a printer like this, make sure you use it every week at least. Ideally, these printers are used, designed for using every day. Um, do not leave a printer like this for weeks on end without using it. I won't say you will get problems, but if you do get problems, you were warned. Now, the nozzle checks for this are dead easy to do. Uh, sheet loading, which I'll come back to when I do some printing and things like that, is really easy. It's a little flap at the top here. You just drop a sheet in and it loads it. Uh, it's really simple. These are loaded nozzle checks. I left it overnight, um, did a clean and got a perfect nozzle check. Um, it really does make a difference, particularly if you're doing profile and quality adjustment. Now, I'm going to load some paper in this a moment, in a moment, but some of the things I've been doing already, um, and this is just Epson Premium Luster paper, just a basic paper. Uh, these are the automated checks for head alignment and adjustment of quality. Now, run these and run them for bi-directional, unidirectional printing as needed and for the quality setting. I've chosen quality over accuracy. You've got a choice. If you need to print precision prints to a certain size, then you'll choose accuracy. Um, I don't really mind about that. I'm interested in getting quality out of this. So this is one of the automated tests. Uh, these are similar to the tests you may have come across on smaller printers where you have to look at charts and guess numbers and enter things in. But on this, they're fully automated, which makes things a lot easier. Now, I'm gonna load a, a roll of paper just to show how easy it is. Now I'm using a 16 inch roll here. Um, this takes up to 24 inch rolls. The process is the same. Uh, you can just lift the lid here. Uh, I've got a roll. This is quite a hefty roll here. This is Epson Premium Luster, say 260 gram. Really easy. Take one of the end rolls, pop that in, lock it in place. There are little expanding teeth that come out and lock things in place once you put that in. There we go, we've locked the end caps on that. Keep the protective paper on the paper if you're handling it. Nothing touches the paper in this. This is a proper roll feed system with a cutter. This is not like the roll feed system you get on the P700, P900. They're made for occasional convenient use. This is made for everyday use um, and is a very different system. I've lifted it up here. I'm just going to roll this in place here. There's some little marks and things on here to suggest where you put them. You put that. Now, I take this roll here, which is the spindle unit, and I just push it into place. You can hear it makes a slight ratcheting noise. But anyway, that's that, that's there. I want to, should have unlocked it first. I'm new to the printer. You will make mistakes. So don't rush. Lock that in place, and there it is. So I've got the paper loaded. It's detected. It says roll paper cover open, load roll paper, question mark. Um, keep it closed when you're not in use. Anyway, I'm going to take the uh, paper off here. You can hear it just unrolls, and there's the paper. Keep the paper. As I say, it protects the surface of the paper, and uh, I'll put it back when I'm finished. So we've got the paper. Roll it back, take the leading edge of the paper. As ever, make sure your fingers are clean. Um, 
does help, does save on marks. I'm just going to load the paper in here. Now I load it in the slot. Press set there. We get a little description. It's now open thing so I can load it in. There's a beep. Tells me it's done. All I need to do, put that, press complete there, and it will load the paper. And it's loaded up. Asks me for the paper type. Um, I've turned off the paper remaining option. Paper remaining option will print a tiny little barcode on the end of the roll. So it will allow the printer to keep tabs of how much paper is left. Other than that, keep an eye on it. I don't use it. Um, I just have this thing. I don't change paper often enough. And I don't want to waste paper. Um, Roll printers like this, you will waste paper. You will get bits cut off. You will, if you get a roll printer with a thing, the, the thought that this is going to save me on paper, certainly it's something like the P700, P900, you only use roll paper because you need it. You don't use it for other reasons. Sheets are far better for small prints. In fact, sheets up to A2 will slot in this quite nicely. And I would say, if you want to do sheet printing, this is great, as well as I've seen say things. I've tested the P900, like it, but this is what I would call a real printer. So we've got it loaded, everything's there, we've set that, it's going to now do its tricks. And the nice thing is, there's a clear dark window here, and I can see in here the paper feed, there's a cutter at the bottom, and there's a paper collector at the bottom. Now, it's a sort of cloth tray. Every single Epson large printer I've used has a different design for this. It's like they've been searching for the optimal design for at least 25 years. And somebody at Epson is obviously in the paper catcher design department and they need a job each time a new printer comes out. Uh, this doesn't look any better than the previous ones I've used in the past. It doesn't look any worse than it. But we'll see when I start making some actual big prints. But anyway, we've got paper loaded. You can hear the fans. These printers are noisy in comparison to desktop printers. Uh, they just are. But anyway, we've got the paper. I'm just going to do for a test print here. All I'm going to do is a profiling target. Now I'm going to be printing a lot of these. But to start with, I'm doing uh, a profiling target using Epson Premium Luster 260 gram. I've got a roll of the stuff. I'm going to print off a load of these. I will have to leave them to dry thoroughly before I can do the testing. Um, I'm going to measure them. I'll just put in a bit towards the end of the, uh, this video, I'll include a small section on the profiling results. So if you're curious as to what I get results I get from this, carry on to the end. Oh, the other thing I always forget to say as well is please do subscribe to the channel if you find it interesting. Ask questions, I appreciate them. I've only got this here for less than a month. So if you've got a question, ask me now while the printer is here, rather than in a month and a half's time when I can only guess from what I did in testing. But anyway, we've got paper loaded. I can see the paper loaded here, clearly. I'm just going to print the target. I'm printing a target of nearly 3,000 color patches here for profiling because I've got an automated reader and it gives very good quality results for the profiling. So I'm just going to go here. I've set everything up. Uh, it is uh, set for the paper type. This one is just at the basic quality setting. I've set to print as a color target and I'm printing it here from my Mac. I'm using the color sync utility. I'm just going to press print. Now I've pressed print. Uh, this printer is not on a wireless network. This one is on our house gigabit ethernet network. It started up straight away. The light comes on inside and here it's actually doing some printing. You can see the head assembly moving about. You can see the ink lines. It's going to print that for us in just a moment. And it's off, it's printing. Should only take a relatively short time to print this. It's quite quick. I'm going to have to catch the uh, picture as it comes out the bottom. Well, I've got the print catcher, but it's cloth and the picture will fall out and roll on it and it will actually go print side. It will be dry by the time it comes out, but I still need to check on this. Nice thing being able to watch the print appearing 
Um, it's not quite like watching your print appear in a darkroom tray, but um, it's pretty similar. Well, perhaps not for test images like this, where we want, perhaps for a new photo. There we go, it's uh, finished its printing, it's come out, and there we go, cut. And there we have it. One profiling target, once it's dried, ready for me to actually make a profile. Now, I'll just unload the paper from this, which is simple to do. All I need to do is to unload the paper, press the menu, paper setting, roll paper, there we go. I just go remove and it's going to eject the paper. There we go, it's the paper rolling back onto the roll and we're done. There we go, there's the paper put back on its roll. Now I could wind the brown paper back on this, take it off the reverse process, I loaded it up and there we go, we've got it. So there we go, I've got my profiling print. Um, I shall now wait for this and some others I've done to dry and uh, we'll go to after I've made some profiles. Right, I've measured the chart and this is just one of the papers and this was at the uh, high quality setting, this particular one. And I'm using an I1 ISIS XL, that's a scanning spectrophotometer. It measures uh, UV as well as uh, in the visual spectrum and uh, you get this set of data from it. Well, one of the nice things is you can click on any patch and see the precise details of the measurements. Uh, those are numbers and also you get the nice spectral plot from it. Now, one of the things I can look at here, I can see that on this particular uh, media setting, which was the HQ high quality one, if I remember rightly, about medium setting, uh, one I'd normally choose to use. Uh, this one gives me a D-max of 2.64. Now that's the blackest black. I personally don't pay much attention to these numbers because the black of a media is a relative thing and I don't use it for deciding whether one media is better than another. Uh, 2.64 is not bad for, for these. I'm sure some people will look at the numbers and draw other conclusions. You're welcome to it. It's much like judging cars by basing how big is the petrol tank. It may be of relevance to you, but it's probably not. But more interesting, given that I've looked recently at dye base printers and a whole range of printers, and this is clicking on the black patch, we can see that we're getting a good flat spectral response. Now the flat spectral response we're seeing here and the red and the green versions are with and without UV uh, in, in the measurements. That flatness just tells me that I'm going to get a nice neutral black and no obvious changes in lighting. Now I need to look at other colours and I need to look at it more widely but I hope to see whenever I do a measurement of something I hope to see a nice dead straight line across there and that's a good sign. Now, I've created the profiles. It takes a few minutes for each profile to create. And this is, uh, I'm now looking at the gamut volume of the profiles. This is using uh, the inbuilt uh, or, or as supplied Mac Color Sync uh, utility. And it's giving me a, a graphical indication of the gamut volume. Now, don't get too hung up on gamut volumes. I will never include in reviews actual numeric gamut, gamut volumes. I think they're a complete waste of time unless they are clearly and adequately explained. Given that that needs an entire article of its own, I just simply don't include them. If you see somebody quoting lots of gamut volumes, be suspicious that they may be more inclined to trust data over actual meaning. Always a problem in colour management if you're not careful. Anyway, here's the gamut volume, this arbitrary shape. It's not a bad one. I've seen better, I've seen worse. But this is at the quality setting. I'm now going to step through the settings from the lowest quality setting, uh, so this is the basic setting, through the next one, which is high quality. And you can see that it does get slightly larger. There's not much difference. Now go up to the maximum quality setting. And I'm now finally going to add the black optimizer coat and we can see that the gamut volume gets even larger. So I'll just step back through those again 
So that's the maximum. That's without the black optimizer. That's high quality. And that's quality. Now, the differences are visible, but they're not going to make much difference. But anyway, I've created different profiles for different settings. I wouldn't normally do this because of the amount of effort it takes, other than my absolute favourite papers. So, for general use, use the high quality setting, pick the high quality, uh, yeah, I'll create the profile at high quality. If I'm going to be doing some really top end printing on this and I want to get the very best out of it, I'll do a printer profile for the particular setting I'm going to use because there are slight differences, but I'm going to say you're not going to notice the difference. What we really need is actually to print an image because you can get so far looking at all this sort of stuff, but when it comes down to it, it's the image that counts. So let's have a look at printing an image. Right, well, I've made some profiles for this particular paper. Uh, I'm going to do a test print uh, just to check everything's okay. Uh, I've no reason to expect it won't. Paper's loaded. It's the same luster paper that I use for doing the uh, targets. And I'm going to print one of my standard test images. So that's loaded up in Photoshop. I've selected the profile that I'm going to be using for it. It's one of the ones I've made. And uh, now I'm just going to print it. Now this is a somewhat bigger file than the profiling targets, which are by the nature relatively small files and uh, takes a bit longer. But that's mainly due to the speed of my old Mac laptop here, nothing to do with the printer or the network. Light comes on, comes the paper loaded in and printing has started. Now I've not done any specific layout on this. Um, it's a 13 by 19 inch image and it's on 16 inch paper so it's going to print lengthways, much like the profiling targets. At the high quality setting, it's telling me it's going to be two minutes left to print. It's pretty quick. The print head on this printer is much larger than the print head on say the P700, the P900. That means it can cover more of the paper at the time. Also the mechanism's quite a lot more robust and it's quick. This is a different league of printer, and just in case you hadn't realized it from its sheer size to something like the 900. 900 is a good printer. It would take this actual paper, but it certainly won't produce results in the speed and I suspect quite the quality you're gonna get from this one. I forgot to set auto cut on this one, which is why the print is still just hanging there. You can set auto cut if you want. Um, I normally do for stuff like this. Must have just been something I missed when I was doing it. There's a little scissors icon here. I'll press that and cut. There we go. And there is one of the first images I always print after profiling. Um, why this image? Well, it's a good image. I've got it for download on the North Light Images website. I've also got the description, because um, it's used with permission of data color. I've also got the description of what each panel is for and what you can tell from looking at each of the different panels inside this image here. Um, I can see, for example, uh, that the black and white reproduction is excellent and that's from a custom profile. Now, I've done testing of the black and white uh, mode of printing, and um, I've printed a lot of test images like this, which I'll be coming back to black and white and looking at it in some detail. But it's interesting to notice that even this print with the, um, using the profile looks superb. Uh, the colors are spot on, there's nothing oversaturated. Yeah, it's a good printer, but I was beginning to suspect that. I hope these little uh, short videos are of use. Please do let me know if there's anything else you want some information on. Um, I've got the printer here for a few weeks. I'm going to be doing lots more prints, big prints and things like that. Um, as I say, let me know, ask questions and thanks for watching.